what is happening is that after great progress, uh, actually since 2000, the last 20 years, we see progress started to stagnate. And uh, first, the rate of improvement declined. Then we saw stagnation over the last few years. And inevitably now, uh, we see that we are uh, moving backward, actually. We are moving fractionally, not too much, but yet we're moving backward. And that is a reason for concern. And we did raise the alarm, actually, two years ago uh, about this issue. Things are moving backward, uh, according to the report. What are some of the causes? I think the, the two main areas we, where we have seen uh, regression uh, is the area of uh, human rights, participation, and democracy, uh, and also the area of security and rule of law. Uh, this is the area we see uh, some regression there. Uh, although uh, economically uh, we are moving forward, human development we are moving still we are moving forward, but the the uh, really regression on on these two areas has pulled us back. Rule of law, safety, and participation and freedom of people. What surprised me is that uh, for the first time now we have a separate section in the index uh, which reflect the citizens' view. And it is interesting that the citizen view of governance in Africa is negative, is, is going down in all areas, even in areas where the data shows them some improvement in the delivery of services, uh, uh, whether education, health, etc., cetera, uh, or the economic development, where Actually, things are moving forward. People perceive that is not. That's interesting uh, to see uh, uh, the divergence between the data and perception of citizens. We talk about the best performing countries. What are some common denominators about best performing countries? Right. We have two categories here. We have the best, uh, the best performing countries and the best improved countries. Best performing countries, the countries that comes as the top of the index. And this is countries like uh, Mauritius, like uh, 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 Cabo Verde, like Botswana. Those guys are doing quite well, and they have been do doing well for a while, actually. Uh, where you can see really uh, a well organized government, uh, you can see a peaceful transfer of power. Uh, uh, you can see transparency, uh, lack of corruption. Uh, things are moving. Uh, then you see another group of countries which can be down in the index, but they're improving quite fast, what we call the most improved countries. And these countries like Angola, like Cote d'Ivoire, uh, Rwanda, uh, these countries are improving really uh, quite fast. And uh, the common factor here in this improved, you know, these vastly improved countries, many of them actually big countries coming out of conflicts. Now, you mentioned Cote d'Ivoire. A country like Cote d'Ivoire is part of the eight countries that have improved in four categories in the index you mentioned there. Uh, yet it is currently experiencing an electoral crisis due to the president's decision to run for a third term against the constitution. Uh, this is really uh, unforeseen and unfortunate situation because uh, I interviewed uh, President Watara uh, in public during our uh, uh, annual uh, conference in Africa. And uh, he, he was absolutely clear and he asserted to me uh, afterwards that he doesn't want to run for third term. And then he has a problem of then his party's candidate, unfortunately, died uh, just before the election. And uh, that put him in a situation he had to run again. I don't think that was the best situation because President Ouattara cemented his economic legacy. He really moved the country and he really did wonderful in the economic front. 
what he wa wanted to do was now, or he should do, is to cement his political legacy. That's also important by reaching out to his opponent, because reconciliation did not happen yet. And as long as it did not happen, that is going to undermine uh, the future of the country. Mr. Mohim Ibrahim, to what extent will COVID-19 impact a country's ranking of African governance uh, in the future? I think COVID is going to affect all African countries in general, but the way it's going to affect the ranking, it really depends on the recovery plans of each country, each leadership. How are we going to recover now from this economy? And to be honest, I mean, it's a big economic hit for Africa. So far, I touch wood, the health crisis has been much less than what we experienced. So I hope uh, it stays as such. We need to recover now with uh, an economy which is uh, more sustainable. We should not depend on just one uh, mineral or uh, one uh, product we sell to the Chinese or other people. We have to diversify our economy. And we have also to deal with inequality, which became very clear during the COVID uh, crisis. Uh, the suffering of people was not the same. We need to start to build our green economy. And also we need to secure our food supplies chains, uh, and we should be able to produce, to produce enough food, but we need to also start to trade with each other. That is going to be very important, how to trade uh, among ourselves. We need to build the infrastructure, which is going to our neighbors. At the moment, most of our infrastructure are roads and ports going out, but we need to start to trade with our neighbors. Uh, and that, that, that also important and provide us with more security, more resilience uh, to be able to absorb the shocks of pandemics or any other future uh, crisis. Would you care to comment on the crisis in the Tigri region in Ethiopia with thousands that are fleeing in Sudan in your country? Well, Ethiopia is a great country which achieved uh, uh, really a great uh, uh, progress over the last 20, 25 years, consistently growing every year by something like 9% is wonderful. And we're just moving forward. And uh, unfortunately, there is an issue with this ethnic composition of the country. And uh, social cohesion uh, really was lacking in the country. Not much effort has been put in that. And uh, we see the results now on uh, Tigray lost power because they used to dominate the previous government. Then uh, they're out of government. So it is a minority group. And of course, they are not happy with that. But instead of talking, those guys are fighting. Can you please talk to each other instead of shooting at each other? Because where are we going to end? Where are we going to go from here? I mean, it's, it, it is really sad uh, when people get blinded by ethnic agendas or, or, or that kind of rhetoric and uh, uh, be able to start to die, uh, that will deepen uh, the, really the issues between these ethnic groups and uh, there will be a lot of grudges, a lot of difficult feeling between people. It doesn't help. We really need uh, leaders on both sides of this conflict uh, to really show us real leadership and stop shooting at each other and start talking and finding a common ground. After all, they are all Ethiopians. They are all Africans. Why fighting? Mr. Ibrahim, when we see incentives uh, such as yours, where you recognize uh, presidents that have had uh, good terms, well, at least they've had positive outcome with their presidential uh, terms in public office. And we also see how organizations like Human Rights Watch uh, call on leaders to do better towards their population. What do you say to these leaders? What do you say to African leaders in terms of really running democratic states and, and becoming uh, examples of, of true democracy, what is your advice to them? Or what is your call? Well, our call, because please, guys, I mean, you are there to serve. And please serve. That's what we expect from you. This, this is not, your country is not, is not 
a personal freedom for you to do what you like with it. You are there to serve the people. Please behave and show us the good leadership we really uh, we deserve and our young people deserve. You ha- they have the future of these young people in their hands. We need to focus on creating jobs for them, improve their education and their health. So if you are at that position of power, please use that power to develop your society, uh, not to develop your own personal interest. And uh, it will catch up with you at the end. It will catch up with you. Mo Ibrahim, thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate your time. Thank you very much, Leah. You're welcome.